before the cock crows, part one. Alternatively, the daily diary of Trojan Horse International CM, September 30th, 2002 to December 31st, 2002, by David Clark, narrated by David Clark. Introduction. The purpose of this publication is to introduce the reader to true and false religion, as David Clark experienced during this mission to the Philippines. The author, David Clark, is a British subject and was a missionary seeking to fulfil his calling as the Honorary Director of Trojan Horse International CM, which stands for Christian Ministry, and a sent minister of the Beard and Strict of Particular Baptist Church in 1982. By honorary, he means he wasn't paid by any organisation. He and the Executive Director encountered remarkable opposition from various quarters in New Bilibid Prison, Montalupa City, Philippines, between October 22 and July 2003. The Directorate were David Clark, the Honorary Director, and Michael Clark, the Executive Director, with Gordon Smith as the Mission Pastor. Most of those who opposed the mission were men from among Asia's most notorious criminals in the National Penitentiary, which is situated on the reservation at Montelupa City, 1770, Philippines. And various religious volunteers, RVOs for short, that worked within and without the prison. If one were to judge the success of the mission by the amount of opposition that it experienced, then the mission was a remarkable success. Newton stated that to every force there is an equal but opposite one to oppose it and like Newton David suggests that to every proactive work there is an equal but opposite reaction. If this reaction were to be the measure of success then the mission was remarkably successful. It always serves to demonstrate that God always triumphs, that God saves not by might, but by his spirit, that God puts to flight thousands of his enemies and empowers the ones and twos that trust in him in order to show that salvation is truly of the Lord. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. So Gordon, you know, you've asked me why we're coming. Well, we're coming really to celebrate the fact that Michael, my brother, Michael John Clark, that his amazing story, in fact, it's so amazing, we ought to tell the world, hadn't we? Now, what are we going to do now, Gordon? We're going to the prison to see the director. The director? Does he know the Trojan horse is going into his room? Will he know? He will do. And what are we going to do when we go in there? We should explain to him why we've come to preach the gospel. The prison comprises of three compounds and penal farms, housing over 23,500 inmates, which are all under the control of the Department of Justice, DOJ, and the Bureau of Corrections, Buca. The chaplaincy, headed by Monsignor Healy Burrido, is responsible for all religious groups and voluntary work done within the prison. Death Row is in the maximum security compound where over 1,200 men were housed and they were all under the sentence of death. Some were doubly confirmed and due to be put to death by lethal injection. Trojan Horse International CM was established in the early part of 2001 and composed of a team of two from England, David Clark and Gordon Smith. The mission was set up as a Christian ministry seeking to bring assistance to Michael, John Clark, David's older brother, and many inmates of that prison. This was where Michael had been incarcerated for a crime he did not commit and was serving a prison sentence of 14 to 16 years. He had been baptised as a Christian in an old 45-gallon US Army oil drum on the 16th of September 2000 in the maximum security compound. Michael, like his brother David, had been converted from a life of crime while suffering the bitter effects of this form of injustice in the Philippines. However, Michael's conversion was some 30 years after David, who had been brought up in Aylesby, Buckinghamshire, and had been converted from a life of crime at the age of 20 years old, on the 16th of January 1970. 
More details regarding Michael's lifestyle may be read in the book Trojan Warriors under Michael's testimony. This diary narrates the second Trojan horse mission to the Philippines in October 2002 and recalls in detail an account of the successes and opposition to the mission. It is an eyewitness account of the opposition to the Gospel of Christ which came from the religious and not the unbelieving world. David points out the very sinister moves of Satan and the effects upon the religious who were not governed by scripture or the grace of God, which exposed them to the craft of the devil. By craft of the devil, he means people who deviate from what the scripture says concerning our behaviours. David points out precisely the doctrinal and practical errors of those religious persons and also names the individuals who were moved by Satan to oppose the gospel of Christ. Hence, the alternative title of this diary could equally be valid and called Acts 29. David uses clear biblical terms and Christian doctrine to point out these errors and he, that he encountered by the religious of this modern age, and so teaches the truth. They that will live godly shall suffer persecution. David believes that the Lord has directed him to pen this history for the benefit of Christians and churches who seek to fulfil their commission. That is to take the gospel of Christ to the whole world. As a result of this mission and opposition, David, with the aid of a Filipino pastor, was able to establish a registered Christian ministry in the Philippines with the Security Exchange Commission, SEC for short, called Trojan Horse International Tulip Fills Incorporated. So there we have members of the Trojan Horse. We have the three three men been appointed today to Chairman of the Board of Directors of Trojan Horse International to take the gospel to the whole world, including those in jail. This was to the dismay of some who opposed the truth of Christ. These truths are expressed in the acronym TULIP. T standing for total depravity of man, U standing for unconditional election to salvation, L stands for limited atonement, I stands for irresistible grace, and P stands for the final perseverance of the saints. All of the above are classical Christian historic tenets of Christian religion established at the Synod of Dort in the 16th century and classified by some as Calvinism. Not that Calvin was the author of these tenets, he was not. But the enemies of truth who cannot give credit to God generally seek to bad mouth and find a name to ridicule those followers of Christ and the truth. Jesus said, let the wheat and the tares grow together and let the angels do the reaping at the end. This will be our wisdom. If this be not of God, then leave it alone, and it will die the death. But if it be of God, then those who rise up against the work will be found to be fighting against the Lord of glory. In like manner, a Christian can tell who are the tares in the field of wheat, and the natural inclination is to root them out. But here is the wisdom of the Lord. Let both grow up together. In the end, the angels will do the reaping and put the tares in the fire. The wheat will not be spoiled, but gathered into the storehouse by them. David discovered that the same principles and errors in religious practice, doctrines and beliefs were found among the religious leaders of New Bilibid Prison Christian Church, NBPCC, that he had found in the Beer and Strict and Particular Baptist Church some 20 years previously and recorded in the author's book The Beer and Crisis 1984 and republished also in his book Let Christian Men Be Men. This account, the Daily Diary of Trojan Horse International, Tulip Incorporated, is true and happened in New Bilibid Prison, National Penitentiary, Montelubar City, Philippines and comes in three parts. Part 1, between September the 30th to December the 31st, 2002. Part 2, between January the 1st and March 24th, 2003. Part 3, between 24th and July 19th, 2003. David Clark.